Furious Driving, proud to be supported by Diamond Bright, protecting, cleaning and caring for the Furious fleet and for yours with 10% off using code FD10. Follow the links in the description below. Hello friends and welcome to Furious Driving and it's a sad day of bad news and solemn news and even the weather is suitably funereal to give us an appropriate atmosphere for the news we have to convey today. The Rover 75 finally is going to be sold. Now this has been some time in coming because this car came into the fleet as part of the flip trading up series where we started with a 400 pound Mondeo, traded it for a Beetle which we traded for a Fiat idea which we traded for this. So actually no money changed hands. We went from a scrap money Mondeo to this absolutely pristine low mileage one owner Rover 75. And part of that series was always to keep on pushing things forward, pushing things up, getting bigger and better cars, more valuable each time. The trouble is I rather like this car and I really didn't want to sell it. And that kind of did put a bit of a crimp on the series. But a few things have happened. I've got other cars waiting in the wings I really want to bring onto the fleet. But I fixed everything that needed to be fixed with this car. We've had our good times in this car. We did about a thousand miles across the summer. Uh, most of that being in two big journeys. One down to Southampton in the last couple of weeks, which proved the car is running well. And previously to that, when I went up to the motorist and of course broke down, had to fit a new battery and latterly new coil packs. And now the car has been running like an absolute dream since. Now I'm calling it a one owner car, but that's really only twisting the truth a tiny bit because initially it was owned by Rover themselves for a couple of months. It was either part of their rental program, but it's in very good condition for that, or it was a management or company car or something. But we think from the area it came from probably part of the, the Rover leasing scheme. So six months belonging to Rover, 2003, it was sold at Beadles of Gillingham, which is just around the corner from here, to a local guy who kept it for 20 years until he was in his mid 80s. And at the beginning of this year decided he didn't want to drive anymore, had the car are MOT'd and thought no enough is enough I'm gonna hand sell the car to my MOT man because at least we all know he at least should trust the car as a good car and he bought it so I guess he uh, had faith in his own MOT while he had the car he absolutely doted on it he has a file like this full of, of receipts for it in the last couple of years it had been having head gasket issues he'd got receipts for topping up on coolant for new head bolts ultimately though, an entire new head was fitted to the car about four years ago so yeah it's an amazingly nice running engine and in addition to that though typical buying a car from a very old person who's giving up driving there tends to be a lot of scuffs around the bumpers i guess it may have had that because he had a new front bumper and he had the both bumpers repainted in the factory wedge were blue so the car looks absolutely pristine so the guy clearly loved this car a lot so although he is the only owner for 20 years rover owned it briefly the mot man owned it briefly and ivan owned it for the summer so there are a couple other names on the logbook however there's only really one true owner of this car now why, if you like this car so much, are you letting it go, I hear you ask? And it's a fairly sound question, to be perfectly honest. And it's not an easy one to answer because this thing is absolutely beautiful. Richard Woolley did a wonderful job styling this car. Just looking out the window at this car makes me smile every day because it is absolutely beautiful. It is like a baby Bentley when you look at it. The, this bodywork is just a beautiful shape. The chrome, the detailing, everything inside the wood. It's not got leather in this one, but the, the wood which I've now replaced for real wood from the early cars, again, makes it feel like a car much more expensive than it actually is. The trouble is though, what else do I sell instead? I've got two cars away for work and nowhere to put them when they come back and everything else has a purpose. The Freelander, unreliable and clunky as it is, is a really good camping car because it's good but it's just scruffy enough not to worry if we go camping and take the dogs and it'll get anywhere and it's got off-road tires on it and it's, it's good but we could maybe replace that with another off-roader of some kind but that's the off-road corner. The 200 VI, I know the previous owner is really keen to have that car back but it is so much fun to drive. Honestly that is one of the most enjoyable cars I've ever owned. It looks so innocent and sweet and cute and unassuming but it is an absolute fireball on the road it's brilliant and because it's had the head skimmed about three times i don't think you can take any more skimming on that head the compression is out of this world i've not done a rolling road on it but it should have been about 150 horsepower from the factory i reckon that's putting out more now and it just revs like crazy the 145 i've owned that for a couple of years now but i wanted one for so long and it's a car that makes it feel special every time you drive it the mini cooper pre-production car very early lucky find great car not selling that and where do you go everything in the fleet has a niche the trouble with this is yet another saloon we've got the crown victoria we've got the volvo we've got the w123 in the garage that's a lot of big saloons that are not very economical all fulfilling the same role 
and this one's got the smallest boot, which <laughs> means that if I'm going to go to a car show and take things to sell, for example, the Volvo 740 is a better deal because I can fit more stuff in it. So is the Crown Victoria and the W123 when it's finished, which is unfortunate. On the plus side though, it does have air conditioning and it's ULEZ compliant, which does make it quite a good modern car. And that's where I'm worried about selling this car. It's too good. It's only got 61,000 miles on it from new, and it's got loads of MOTs and services through to back that mileage up and the condition will speak for itself. I would like this car to go to someone who's going to collect it and use it as a special car rather than a daily car. It's perfectly capable of being a daily car, but I just feel like it's too nice for that. But in the hope of keeping it a bit nicer for a bit longer for the next person and the future, we've got a few jobs to take care of today. We're going to give it another clean up to make it as pristine as we can. I'm going to polish these headlights again because the duck's back seems to have faded off quite quickly. And then we're going to underseal it to make it as future proof as possible. Normally I use built hamber because I absolutely love the built hamber stuff. The products are fantastic to use and have great rust protection. But Bulldog BDX people, they've got a new version of their underbody sealant. So I'll get these togs off and we'll have a look at that. Right, so I thought it might be prudent to change out of the suit before climbing under the car. Now, we have a slight problem as far as getting the car elevated to do wax oiling duties at the moment. First of all, the metal um, ramps which I've got and are pretty awful. You might want to cast your mind back to the Rover 400 sliding back and smashing through the sill. Yeah, let's not do a repeat of that one. And currently, my garage door is broken so I can't get in to uh, extract any jacks in there. So I've done the best I can, which is drive it up on some thick bits of wood. So I've got some elevation. And what I'm going to be doing is using this stuff. Now, this isn't actually Bulldog as a brand. Bulldog is a product that they make. This is the People's Metal Cutting, Coating and Lubricating Concern, GMB or something. Oh, MDS Europe, there we go, that's a company name. They actually sent me this as a trial to see what I thought of it. Uh, and we've got two cans of, it's called Alpha Lan. Now they said, they looked at other kind of sheep-based um, lanolin car coatings and they found the content they didn't think was very high indeed. So this has actually got, I think, at least three entire sheep compressed into each can. So we should be absolutely fine to uh, coat the majority of the floor of this car. Now the main thing I'm going to be concerned about is um, ugh, the rear suspension because those arms just there, I want to fill them with the uh, the gunk and all the rest of this stuff because the floor itself is actually in exceptionally good condition. But this area back here gets hit by the um, the bad weather and goes kind of crusty and nasty so if I can get the back end of the car done I will be happy with that at least. Now I have already washed the floor of the car with a jet wash using snow foam to dissolve any dirt off the floor and this fantastic under the floor roly-poly contraption hose thing which is available on Amazon in a link in the description below. And of course I also did the 200VI because I'm hoping to get that one under sealed soon as well. These little Draper work lights are so handy for lighting up underneath the cars. I'm going to start off though by putting some stuff into the box section because that would be dirty otherwise. This is one of those nozzles that squirts in all directions at once, so we can feed that up in there and then start filling it with sheep. Sheep up, people, sheep up. I'm pretty always oh, dripping, yuck. I recycled so much cardboard this morning, I really regret that now. Oh, it's dripping. Oh, can, it's it, entire sheep falling on the floor. There's an entire sheep on the floor. Let's try and get as many holes filled with this thing. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's coming out. This little channel here has got squirtable holes too. basically an entire lamb chopping the suspension on me now. Rounded. The more holes to put a thing through you find, so we'll put it through here and all. Try and feed it as far up as we can, right up into whatever the box section is and where it goes. Little holes up here as well above this uh, And the more places you can stick this little rod inside stuff and squirt the wax, the better, because it means more places are being 
protected on the inside. I mean, not even started on the outside yet. Yeah, squirty handle thing and a, a shorter nozzle as well. So you get there's a nice easy access to coat all this whole area up here. Oh, it's yellow. How weird. I didn't know sheep were yellow on the inside. Exhaust pipe is very much in the way here. I can't get any of my jacks out right now. At least we can get quite good access because this car is quite high riding. Uh, more holes to stick stuff through. This one can, which is nearly empty now, has managed to cover virtually the entire floor of the car, up including the sills themselves. And I'm going to go back and get my squirty nozzle one and go up inside the sills. There's a few little holes so I can access that and stop the sills rotting out, which is something I don't want to happen on this car. Yuck, I've taken my gloves off now and that was a mistake. That was also a mistake. Right, just find the other four corners as well and try not to coat myself with it again. So I can use this little access thing here to um, do the driver's door. Whee! Angular rear door, of course, as well. Well, that rear door won't be rusting anytime soon. Okay, so that is basically done as best as I possibly can with the couple of cans they sent me over. It used one entire can for the um, the floor pan itself, sort of going up into the crevices along the sills on the at the edge as far as I could, and another entire can to load up all of the box sections, the sills, the door bottoms, and all the rear suspension, which is a, a known rusting point on these cars. So anything to protect these cars is a good thing. It does look nice and shiny with the waxy goo, which is doing its thing. It seems to be spreading and creeping quite well as well. So that's all good. Now let's move up to the Oh yeah, and part of that will be once it's finished draining out, I'll get some braking clutch on this and clean off <laughs> the slight overspill from the doors, which are clearly not going to rust anytime soon now. Now when I first got this car, I did clean up this headrest really quite nicely using the old, um, what was this thing? The Bissell, which was a great shop vac thing which you got for the Moldeo, which seems to still be the most popular series I've ever done. This doesn't need quite such a heavy level of cleaning. This seat doesn't look or feel dirty, I just kind of feel like it would benefit from a quick clean up. I'm not going to go with the full heavy duty clean which I've done on previous cars. I'm just going to go with some carpet up and upholstery cleaner, which soaks in, and then I'm going to vacuum it out with the Bissell so that that way we get the fullest possible effect. This stuff works really well normally. I've done a couple of cars with this stuff where you just squirt it on, leave it for a couple of minutes and literally sponge it off with a sponge and clean water. But with the Bissell, this will go a lot more effectively. And I cannot emphasize how much I do not want to part with this car because this interior is just beautiful but needs must sadly, needs must. If I had just a little bit more money and a lot more space, this car would be a permanent member of the fleet. But, sad times. Let's see what we can do with this thing. To get this cleaner. I don't think it's a lot of dirt gonna come out of this thing. If it comes back, it's a little bit fresher feeling. That'd be nice. Well, for me, and for the new owner, you never know. Maybe I'll win the lottery this week and I can keep this car indefinitely, which would be lovely. And looking at this, it's almost clear water coming out of there. Normally when I do this, it's kind of brown. It's kind of gives you an idea of the level of care that is given to this car over its life. Now that there is one of the very few faults with this car. A little, I guess it's a burn, I don't, I'm not sure really. But uh, it could be a cigarette end that's fallen on it at some point. It doesn't smell like a car that's been smoked in, so that would surprise me. 
and something has nicked it. So I say, there's only about two, maybe three things that are points of issue with this car as far as I'm concerned. And that's one of them, so it gives an idea of how good this car actually is. Well, the seats after doing that don't look significantly different, but, but that is the water that has come out of them, which is <laughs> quite brown, significantly brown, you might want to call that. So good, good news. Seats are brighter, fresher and lovelier, so next owner of this car is going to have a lovely seating position. And going back to that little mark down there, looking at the way the rest of this car was, was looked after, I can only imagine how annoyed the previous owner was when that happened, because he kept this car absolutely pristine, clearly loved it a lot, and when that happened he must have been furious. And this is one of those cars where it's in such lovely condition that a couple of minutes with a hoover suddenly transforms it. But to get the dashboard looking its absolute best, I'm going to use some Dumb & Bright interior trim enhancer, which will, let's make sure it's on spray, which will clean and shine all the interior surfaces, make the thing look just absolutely cracking. I did this to the Freelander just before we went on holiday. And you know what, I'd never cleaned the Freelander, oh, it's like bananas. I'd never cleaned the Freelander interior in all the time I've owned it. And it always looked like a car that had been used for hunting, shooting, fishing, and just muddy and brown. And uh, a few minutes after that, it looked like a brand new car. It looked better than showroom, because no one in the showroom was ever going to take the kind of care that I was over that particular car. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it still looks nice, even a month or so later. And you might not have seen this particular video, but this dashboard is all actual proper real wood from an earlier car because uh, the earliest car's got a proper Bentley style wood, which looks fabulous. The later cars, Project Drive cars, which this kind of falls into that category of, they got uh, a plastic wood, which looks pretty convincing, but just doesn't have the same kind of, I don't know, depth to it. And uh, having got, and that was from a, a viewer who very kindly brought it along to the motorist when I had this car up there in Yorkshire for the day. Uh, that was actually a bit of a slight concern of how I was going to get it home because <laughs> it was so tightly packed I was worried it wasn't going to fit. That is the one issue with this car is that it's a fairly large car but not a huge interior. If I'm being very honest about it. Now, I've got some brushes for the air vents, so I'll go and give them a quick dust over the trim brush in a minute that's all available from diamond bright don't forget there is a 10 percent discount code for anything diamond bright on their website if you use code fd10 and this stuff is absolutely lovely to use smells nice cleans well go and give diamond bright a click because you won't regret it you'll have some lovely cleaning stuff in your garage to get your own car nice and it will show diamond bright that my viewers are still clicking on their links and i'll want to keep on sponsoring the channel which means i can keep on buying silly cars I'm not buying silly cars for myself, I'm buying silly cars for you, obviously. The vent brush, another little diamond bright product. You don't really notice how dusty a vent gets, but you do subconsciously, if that makes sense. So, <laughs> getting them clean on a subconscious level means the car feels fresher and nicer. And once you do notice it, you can't unnotice it. You just can't unsee it. Right, it's the next day. Believe it or not, I am kind of lagging this job out a little bit because I don't really want to be getting rid of this car, but I know it's going to be done, so I'm just taking my time over it. So I've got all my usual suspects for cleaning the outside of the car. Now the inside's clean, ceramic blast, ceramic shampoo, ruby red for the wheels, rinse and shine to give it a nice gloss when it's done, and ceramic glaze to give it a lovely lasting finish. So let's snow foam this thing up. possibly the easiest clean finishing substance in the world to use. You literally just squirt it on. I've used this in previous videos. I've done full proper ceramic lasers on some other cars including the crab big over there and wipe it off. And that is literally ceramic glazed for about three months. That means dirt doesn't stick to it and the car has a lovely shine. 
rain just beads and runs away. The car looks amazing. It doesn't take long to do either. I've done a Bentley in under five minutes with this stuff before. Now I did just ultra glass the windows which makes them look crystal clear and lovely and now my final, actually my favourite of all the Diamond Bright range is the Replenish which is the, well it's better than tyre shine, it's amazing. It's a rubber and plastic rejuvenator which gives the most amazing deep black shine to any plastic or rubber and it kind of cleans it at the same time. I'll wipe over this stuff in a second with a, a dirty microfiber that I keep specifically for this purpose and I always wear a glove for this one because it makes... Yeah, I need a new one of these. <laughs> and don't forget, there is, as I say, a 10% off code FD10 at the Diamond Bright store. Link in the description below. If for any reason it doesn't work, then give them a call. I've got a sales hotline. They will help you out. Uh, don't call me because I can't do anything about it, but they can. Mintier than mint Rover 75, which does look spectacular, both inside and out. No, I haven't done under the bonnet yet. Maybe I'll come to that in a few minutes, but the clock is ticking and the day is disappearing once again. I need to go and take some photos of this thing. So maybe I'll do a quick wipe over the engine in a minute. But anyway, I'll take you out for a quick drive in this thing and tell all the good points and the bad points so you know exactly what this car is like. This is very much a laid back, relaxed cruiser of a car. Um, the 1.8 turbo is probably the pick of the bunch as far as 75 engines go. It gives pretty similar performance to the V6, but with much, much better fuel economy. It's also ULES compliant, so you can drive it into North Kent, which isn't part of London. without being fined £12.50, which most of the rest of my cars I would be, which is very, very annoying in fact. So I've actually kept it longer than planned. I've had it for over six months now, which is indicative of how much I've liked owning the thing. Just looking at it is a, is a pleasure, really. Uh, I think I enjoy looking at it more than anything else, in fact. Um, so I was only meant to have it a week or two, but as I say, I've had it like, more than half a year. And I've put well, just over a thousand miles, about 1200 miles or so on it in that time. The bulk of that being a trip up to the motorist in Yorkshire and then down to Bewley Auto Jumble. The Bewley Auto Jumble being the most recent one, that was two hours each way and that did kind of just prove the car is running really reliably because it was completely trouble free. In the time that I've had it, I've given it a full service. I've changed the coil packs because those failed on the way to Yorkshire. I also gave it a new battery because at first I thought that was what the problem was when it broke down on the way to Yorkshire. Uh, so it's been well looked after in that respect. I've changed the door locking mechanism on the passenger door that you're stuck to. It's exactly the same component as fails in the Freelander and I've changed a couple of them in the Freelander as well, but that is now working as it should. Um, I've changed all this wooden dashboard from the post uh, project drive plastic wood which is pretty good but you know this is the pre-project drive which is nice we've got the matching wooden steering wheel as well because it was a leather steering wheel when I first got the thing one of the viewers very kindly uh, dropped off a exactly the same alloy wheel I think they call it the union flag alloy wheel um, up at the motorist and I've now got that as a spare wheel in the car it didn't. and in terms of kit it's pretty well sorted actually I think it's kind of a mid-range just the club SE isn't it I keep forgetting what spec it actually is apart from the very very nice cloth interior which I think is actually rather nicer than the leather to be perfectly honest it's so comfy any weather it's nice to get onto we've got the radio cassette which sounds fantastic we've got the air conditioning which is dual zone which is very very nice indeed we've got the lovely wood got an analog clock which looks nice no sunroof so no leaks which is good we've got electric windows all around electric mirrors um, what is, oh, I've cleaned out the plenum chamber I took out the plenum chamber rotted through all three of the drains and they weren't blocked and because it's the 1.8 not the v6 it doesn't even matter if it does fill up because you know it's not going to dump the ec in the water until the car is literally underwater itself anyway those all three drains are rotted through and draining as they should do the tires are about halfway through their life i would say they're dunlop so like a premium brand that suits the car and it's this beautiful wedgewood blue this is uh, what a great combination the wedgewood blue the dark wood and the gray trim it just looks fantastic obviously it's not completely perfect there's about three things that are wrong with the car which i'll go and show you in a second that's all just cosmetically mechanically it seems absolutely fine the gearbox is really nice and tight the steering is tight the brakes are good The only thing is the exhaust. When I first got it, there was a clonking noise underneath, which turned out to be the exhaust pipe uh, was too close to the chassis and uh, over bumps that would bang. 
local tire place gave it a little bit of a tweak and it seemed to fix it but the last week or so it's just started and a little bit again which is a little bit annoying but not the end of the world i might see if i can get underneath the car and give it a bit of a a tweak myself if i can fix my garage door and get my jacks out that'll be the uh, main decider overall the condition is just fantastic the main thing is the bodywork is flawless there are no dings anywhere on the car the paint is really nice overall and there's no corrosion on it which is just phenomenal because these cars do have a bit of a tendency to rust but looking underneath it the sills the floor pans the rear suspension it all looks very good in fact so this car is definitely a winner there's a nice little car park here but i'm going to take some photos of it and i will uh, just show you those three little things that bug me about the car cosmetically so in terms of cosmetic issues there's really very little wrong with the car at all paintwork is fantastic the headlights i will clean up again i've done one dose of ducks back and they faded off again but I'll re-clean them again. The front wheels are not curbed which is fantastic. There's no rust, there's a few little marks and I've waxed all that yesterday. There's a little mark on this wheel just here and there's a very tiny little mark here on the back bumper and on the roof it's actually quite hard to see. I don't know if it'll show up on this or look really terrible but I didn't notice this until I looked out of an upstairs window but there's a bit of a patch of paint which is going a bit weird on the roof but beyond that this car is actually in astonishingly good condition it's very windy outside so i have climbed back in again the interior on this thing is just gorgeous it's such a nice place to be it really is nice uh door this light it's such a silly thing to light but i do like that interior light now in terms of value i've been watching the price of these things over the summertime i'm watching as many auctions as many private sales as i can and i'm thinking that a car in this condition with its mileage and its history it's going to be sitting at somewhere between three to four thousand pounds so i know a few people have been interested in this car and they've dropped me an email previously when i first got it and i will be in touch with them but if anyone else is interested then drop me an email body in the boot at gmail.com for a stick on like car and classic or somewhere because i want it to go to someone who's going to love it i want someone to continue to care for this car because it is beautiful it's been loved its entire life and i would like it to continue to be loved for well the rest of its life really if you're interested in taking on a beautiful car which has got great history, then please give me a shout. This is probably one of the saddest videos I've had to make in a very long time, but hopefully you'll have a happy ending. But like Quentin the convertible, which I reluctantly sold, but has gone to a new owner who absolutely adores the car, someone's going to keep on loving this car, and we'll have some new content to take to you. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. Don't cry.